species. Costa Rica alone has over 850 species of birds, more than the entire North American continent. Most species occupy niches from the forest floor to the canopy and eat fruit, insects, or both. Other species of birds occupy the skies above the canopy, swamps, estuaries, and marine habitats, and have more specialized diets. Seventy percent of Costa Rica's bird species live there year-round. The remaining thirty percent migrate there, mostly from North America. But a few seabirds migrate from as far as Siberia and New Zealand. Thousands of people come to Costa Rica every year to go birding. With a relatively high number of eco-lodges located in or near the rainforest, seeing birds in Costa Rica's southern zone can be as easy as sitting comfortably and waiting for them to come to you. Costa Rica's southern zone is basically everything south of Dominical on the Pacific and San Isidro in the mountains. Its remoteness has sheltered the region from some of the large-scale development that has gone on in the northern parts of the country. Six of the 40 species of toucans can be found in Costa Rica. Toucans are relatives of the woodpecker, and their most obvious feature is their colorful, disproportionately large beaks. Primarily frugivores, toucans use their long beaks to dine on a variety of fruit, although they've also been known to feed on eggs, lizards, and frogs during nesting and breeding periods. Researchers are still not totally sure why the beak is so long but some theorize that the long beak enables them to reach far out on tree branches, snag a piece of fruit, toss it up in the air, and catch it in their mouths. Toucans benefit the forest by dispersing seeds, and along with other frugivores are responsible for the placement of many of the forest fruit trees. Toucans tend to run in small packs of three to 12 birds. They're not the most graceful flyers, but they certainly seem to enjoy life as they make their way from tree to tree enjoying a virtual smorgasbord of forest fruits. Toucans nest and sleep in hollow tree holes, which protects them from hunters and stalkers. At present, their numbers are fairly stable in Costa Rica, but as with everything, loss of habitat and deforestation is a constant threat. Another neotropical favorite is a member of the parrot family, the scarlet macaw. Once found on both the Caribbean and Pacific coasts, Scarlet macaws are now only found on the Pacific coast, and to be more specific, on the southern Pacific coast. Scarlet macaws are beautiful to see in the wild, and their quirky personalities make them a joy to watch. Macaws often fly in pairs or in small groups, and can reach speeds up to 35 miles per hour. Their diet consists mainly of large seeds, fruits, and nuts. They're particularly fond of almond nuts and are the only birds with beaks powerful enough to crack open the tough husk and extract the nut. Unfortunately, the same colorful plumage that makes them such an attraction for tourists is the same plumage that has made them popular pets. Currently, all macaw species are now being threatened by poaching for the pet trade and by habitat loss. One thing being tried in Costa Rica's southern zone is reintroduction. Run by Zoo Ave, the goal is to reintroduce scarlet macaws back into areas where they once existed, but were poached or hunted to extinction. There's three um, release projects for the scarlet macaws in Costa Rica, and this is one of them. The primary goal is to release 200 uh, scarlet macaws into their natural habitat uh, within the next 10 years. And so they're releasing 10 to 15 scarlet macaws every year. Zoo Ave's decision to begin the scarlet macaw reintroduction program is based on the endangered status of this species in Costa Rica, the continued existence of protected habitat within the native range of the scarlet macaw in an area where the species has been extirpated, an existing captive population and an available source of new genetic material in the form of confiscated wild birds which are entrusted to the zoo. It's important to begin reintroduction efforts while enough genetic material exists in the wild to help sustain a viable population. Reintroduction programs for endangered species which have not yet reached a point of crisis are potentially more likely to succeed due to a higher level of available genetic material. 
There are many places on the Osa Peninsula where scarlet macaws are easy to see. One is in the almond trees that line the soccer field at Puerto Jimenez. I take these macaws cheering for Puerto Jimenez as they played arch rival La Palma. When I wasn't looking, one of the macaws decided to see if he could surprise me by dropping an almond husk on my head. The bird had great aim and left me laughing with the thought of how cool it is that places like this still exist.